I'm Kevin Lavender. And I'm Amanda Lavender. We're the Lavenders. We became Seventh-day Adventists through uh, some Bible workers. First, it came from uh, ASI, um, and I think they were staying at the church, the Revelation Seminar. David came in to buy a cell phone, and he was also doing Bible studies with uh, different uh, different people, going door to door, um, I guess businesses too, or at least I wound up doing a Bible study at my business. <laughs> I had a cell phone and uh, internet store, and uh, well, yeah, we would do Bible studies there at the store. A few of the Bible studies, some customers would come in and, and just be open to joining in the Bible studies with us. Most weren't uh, receptive of some of the some of the teachings about the Sabbath would be one of them, and a lot of the customers had had my uh, opinion on it too, which was the Sabbath is not important anymore. My mom went to a Baptist church. We went with her some. We really didn't go to church very much all the way up until I was probably around 18. Then I started going to church on my own at a Baptist church, and then. Uh, me and Amanda started going to a non-denominational, or a few different non-denominational churches with uh, Baptist backgrounds and Church of Christ backgrounds and until we became Seventh Adventists. So I grew up in a Baptist church throughout my teen years and, and then whenever I met Kevin we started going to another Baptist church together and then um, non-denominational churches until the uh, Seventh Day Adventists. I would say the, the point where I got really serious was when I uh, when I felt like all of the uh, scholars and people who went to school to study the Bible for several years and had been, te been teaching for several years, when I felt like um, <clears throat> they were withholding information um, just to not stir up debate, kind of the way the, uh, the Ten Commandments have been taken out of the schools and no one really said why, they just didn't want them out on, um, they didn't mention you know, the Sabbath and they didn't want students, I guess, saying, well, the Fourth Commandment, you know, about the Sabbath, because uh, most people don't have a problem with any of, any of the others, and uh, they think also that Sunday is the Sabbath. But you know, looking back in history, it's it's clear that Saturday is the Sabbath. My mom was invited to a Revelation seminar, and I was probably 18 or so. And I saw the, the pictures, and I was like, oh, this is probably not something good to go see. And I think it was Walter Vyth actually at the church. I just remember seeing the the pictures of the beasts and stuff that were that were drawn, and uh, I was telling her, I don't, I don't think this is something good to study. This is all. You know, they're they're not going to be teaching the right thing. You know, so studying in uh, in Daniel about the Antichrist and the uh, the changing of God's times and laws um, was really eye opening to uh, to be able to point out the Antichrist of the Bible and uh, prophecy and see through history that prophecy how prophecy has been fulfilled. Reading uh, the National Sunday Law was was really eye opening. So me and Amanda we read through the whole thing all at, you know in one night. <laughs> I've always trusted his judgment, so I wasn't sitting in on any of the studies, but I knew that he was definitely, you know, paying attention and checking the Bible and making sure that everything was lining up. And so whenever he was telling me everything, I, I trusted him and, and then he'd show me, here's why, here's what they taught me, here's, look, it's right here. And, and then whenever we read the National Sunday Law, he was like, do you want to stop? And I'm like, no, just keep going. And that's how we just went through it in one night, and it was just mind-blowing to see all the truths that we've never been told. And, you know, as he kept reading, I'm like, oh, wow. Wow, you know, this is okay. This is real. This is good. I like, yeah, keep going. So that's what we did. At first, we didn't fully know what keeping the Sabbath meant. We thought, you know, if we go to church, that's keeping the Sabbath. Then we can go to the birthday party we need to go to later or take our kid to the baseball game that he needs to go to later. We thought keeping the Sabbath was just showing up at church. And and now that we know it's so much more than that. So when we started coming to church, I had, had been signed up for Little League. And I said, well, we'll just miss a few church services and we'll get him to his game. And I don't think we ever had to miss one service because um, all of a sudden he hated baseball and this was his favorite sport ever. It was definitely a God thing, this, you know, keeping him from getting on that field that made me just say, fine, we're done. And we just never had to miss the service because of it. 
I really didn't have any objections to keeping the Sabbath. It was a little bit tough though, um, realizing that I needed to, to be closing my business on Saturday. Saturday was the busiest day of the week. You know, it's the day after the most people's payday. So if they're gonna buy a cell phone or internet service or something, it was, uh, you know, most of the time it was on a Saturday. So I saw the need to close the store and, and saw the, the financial effects it was going to have on uh, the family. But I uh, went ahead and did it anyways, just trusting that, that God would uh, make everything all right. We just weren't, uh, we weren't meant to be doing business on the Sabbath. More opportunities opened up. I've been painting for like 20 years. I've been painting since I was uh, 15 years old. So I'd, I'd started taking on more paint jobs and uh, eventually just decided closing the store would be the best thing to do. It was a big change. Um, we had obviously formed very good relationships with the people of our old church and so it was very hard to tell them the truth and have them not accept it and and that hurt and you know those friendships are gone now um, just because they kind of stopped coming around us I guess and then I just didn't see them anymore they didn't come around they didn't come to birthday parties that you know and that hurt I thought I thought we were friends more than just because we went to church together I thought we were we can be friends no matter what we believe, but I guess that wasn't the case. Some other churches we've been to were, were like rock concerts kind of type thing. It was nice to leave with um, sermons where we felt like we really learned from the Bible, where instead of just leaving with a feel-good message, and the feel-good messages, I mean, you felt good, but I don't feel like I ever, I felt like I was just kind of getting the baby food constantly for years and never really growing and getting real spiritual food out of it and then it was an adjustment to go from like he said the music into singing hymns which I love now I I didn't appreciate them at first because I didn't know any of the hymns I was like lost and now I just love it I love singing the hymns and um and it was hard not knowing anybody, feeling like kind of lonely at first. And then now I just love everyone in our church. At our old church, the children, they would always be in children's church. So that was a huge adjustment for them to have to sit there and listen for once. And I feel like they've adjusted well now. And it was a huge adjustment for us to teach the kids to to behave while oh, yeah. in there with us. Actually, so. reverencing a sanctuary, I didn't know that was a thing. So, <laughs> and it's such a good thing. So that was huge to actually like have to learn how to teach your children to, you know, how to reverence God's sanctuary and, yeah, and, you know, without electronics and food. Well, I think when, at first, when we heard about um, uh, how many vegetarians there were in the church we looked at each other and we said oh we're never going to give up meat we're okay can we just make that deal with each other and we were like we're always going to eat meat and we were like okay and we were happy with that but then we uh, watched some videos we watched um, Forks, over, Forks knives. over Knives and at the end of the video we just kind of looked at each other and we're like we both knew what we needed to do after watching that but yeah, that, that night we just decided we weren't going to eat meat anymore and we let the kids make their own decision. We actually let them watch the movie and they said, oh yeah, we don't ever want to eat meat again. We go to Fort Worth Northwest Seventh-day Adventist Church in Sansom Park. We go to Fort Worth Northwest Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fort Worth. I was in Fort Worth. It's Sensor Park, Fort Worth, same thing. Um. <laughs> Most people love going to our church because uh, we're gathered together because of the, the Bible truth. We're not gathered together because of clicks or uh, color of our skin or anything like that. The, it's uh, the most diversified church I've ever been in. Yeah, it's like one big family. We feel at home. <laughs> Vegetarian potlucks are awesome. Oh, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. The egg rolls today. <laughs> awesome.